globalization made the world everyone's oyster by opening access to foreign markets. It's now more lucrative for EU companies to trade goods and services abroad. Trade may make the world go around, but what's the trade-off? Time to take a closer look. A bilateral trade deal as opposed to a multilateral trade deal. The preferred tool for the World Trade Organization is more beneficial for one simple reason. With less people, it's easier to get what you want. The trade deal can also be linked to social standards or human rights, a Cinderella treatment. But the problem with this is that it can lead to protectionism, imposing rules on other countries to ensure your dominance. But dominance is a big reason behind a free trade agreement. With 90% of global demand falling beyond Europe's borders, getting a foothold in emerging markets is important to not get left behind. Free trade agreements open markets by doing away with regulatory barriers like tariffs. The upside is growth and job creation on both sides, but liberalisation is a two-way street. Trade policy is controversial, especially when it comes to which sectors it will apply. The simplest example is a transatlantic trade deal the EU wants to make with the US. Food safety is kicking up a storm. Why? Because Europeans are firmly against US GMOs being marketed on our shelves. Take this beef for example. Europeans like it without hormones, unlike Americans. With such fundamental differences, should food really come within the ambit of a US trade deal? Europe is an old hack when it comes to trade, having concluded over 3,000 free trade agreements. Europe's negotiator-in-chief, the Commission. Time for a quick masterclass on the mechanics behind a deal. I think the Commission has it not completely right at the moment. You need public buy-in for these agreements. More transparency, more information, more clarity about where these negotiations are, what the bottlenecks are. In the past, the Commission has got it horribly wrong. Take, for example, the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement, or ACTA, people protesting in the streets because of its suppression of internet freedoms. But then again, it was through ACTA that the Parliament showed its hand. But what do Europe's two other institutions actually contribute? The answer to that is not a lot. The Council or Member States make the initial proposal, but then the ball is in the court of the European Commission. And what about the Parliament? Well, they always have the right to decide yes or no. So either a deal will be rewritten or it becomes dead in the water. So not a lot actually translate into quite a lot. But how could deals be shaped in the future? Some say that TTIP is building an FDA blueprint between the world's two biggest trading blocks. If that's the case, what's the impact? Well, that's another story.